dear friends, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Taurus New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiatives. My name is Alexander and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 Coordination Group and the UN Meditation Project Vocalizing Group. Today, as we align with the new moon cycle and sun just recently moved to Taurus, we will focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 4, quality education. And with this webinar, we continue the ongoing rhythmical work, working together subjectively to st strengthen the thought forms of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Over to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Alexander. So we just remind ourselves um, a little more deeply of the purpose of our work here today. So our meditation work through the New Moon webinars focusing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is one of supporting and strengthening a shared vision of formulated thought forms of solution to address the many issues facing humanity and the planet at this time. And the intention is to visualize thought forms that help to create conditions leading to the transformation of our world through the elevation of human consciousness. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. And now over to Dot, as we welcome all of you to the group field on this webinar. Thank you, Rebecca. As we do each month in the naming circle, we unite our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and we bring ourselves fully into this group work together and as a group. In uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. And the key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment which creates the group field and allows it to become a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. So as, as we do, we will begin with the, the speakers today, and that list is uh, will follow in order. And then we will go to the attendees list, and I will call your name, and then please unmute yourself say your name and where you're calling in from. So this is Dot Maver calling in from Walpole, New Hampshire, USA. Douglas? Hello, Douglas Wells, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, USA. Welcome, Douglas. George? Hi, George Anthony, Middletown, New Jersey, Pathways to Peace, United Nations. Welcome, George. Rebecca. Hi, it's Rebecca here in Queensland, Australia. Welcome, Rebecca. Tara. <clears throat> Tara Stewart from Walpole, New Hampshire. Welcome, Tara. Anjali. Please unmute yourself. And I realize as that's happening, Daniela and Alexander. So Daniela. Hello everyone. Greetings from Brussels, Belgium. Welcome, Daniela. Alexander. Uh, greetings from New York, United States. 
welcome Alexander. Anjali. Welcome, Anjali. Anna. That is beautiful, Anna. Welcome. Welcome. Anne Marie. Anne Marie. Anna Marie Skovgar from Denmark. Welcome, Anna Marie. Annette. Annette from New Zealand. Welcome, Annette. Annette. This is Annette Löffler from Denmark. Welcome, Annette. Avon. Avon Madison, San Francisco Bay Area, USA. Welcome, Avon. My grandfather, uh, he, he was in the. Uh, Barclay. Uh, he was an artillery sergeant. He was in all the battles. Barclay. Barclay. He survived, but he did get it. Welcome, Barclay. Beata. Please unmute yourself. Welcome, Beata. Betty. Hi, I'm Betty from... USA. Welcome, Betty. Birgit. Birgit Rasmussen from Denmark. Welcome, Birgit. Bob. Welcome, Bob. Karsten. Karsten Damker from Harsley, Germany. Welcome, Karsten. Catherine. Hello, Catherine Payer from Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Catherine. Cheryl. Cheryl Benson, Ames, Iowa, USA. Namaste. Welcome, Cheryl. Chris. Aloha, Christine from Hawaii. Welcome, Christine. Christine? Yes. Okay, then Chris. Tranka? Aloha, still here. There must be two Christine. Yeah, so Christine, Christine Moore. <laughs> Christine Moore. Welcome, Christine. Claire. Morning, everyone. This is Claire in Dunedin, South Island, New Zealand. Welcome, Claire. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. Darcy here from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome, Darcy. Don. Please unmute yourself, Don. Greetings, everyone. This is Don from Lagos, Nigeria. Welcome, Don. Igor. Please unmute yourself. Welcome, Igor. Ira. Ira, Colorado, USA. Welcome, Ira. Irana. Hello, everyone. This is Irana from Toronto, Canada. Welcome, Irana. Eric. Hello, this is Eric from the Netherlands. Welcome, Eric. Eva. Yes, hello. Eva Medici from Stockholm, Sweden. Welcome, Eva. Thank you. Gillian. Gillian Douglas from Norfolk, UK. Welcome, Gillian. Thank you. Ginny. Hi, aloha from Maui, Hawaii. This is Jenny Ross. Welcome, Jenny. Greta. Hello, everyone. I'm Greta from Denmark. Welcome, Greta. Jean Marie.
Welcome, Jean-Marie. Jeanette, please unmute yourself, Jeanette. Welcome, Jeanette. Jeannie. Welcome, Jeannie. Jeff. Jeff Geringer, Athens, Ohio, US. Welcome, Jeff. Joe. Hi, everyone. Joe Walls from the Pacific Northwest on the Oregon coast. Welcome, Joe. John. Please unmute yourself, John. Oh, greetings. This is John Sedevy calling from Herman, Missouri, USA. Welcome, John. Josette. Hello, I am Josette from France. Welcome, Josette. Judy. Hello, this is Judy Harrison from Brewster, Massachusetts, USA. Welcome, Judy. Karen. Greetings, this is Karen Gendron from South, Southern Oregon, USA. Welcome, Karen. Karen. Karen Gritzka, hello everyone from Portland, Oregon, US. Welcome, Karen. Catherine. Catherine Hendon. Welcome, Catherine. Catherine. Good morning, this is Catherine from Christchurch, New Zealand. Welcome, Catherine. Lisa. Please unmute yourself, Lisa. Hi, everyone. This is Lisa from Sky Mountain, Denmark. Welcome, Lisa. Lorraine. Hello, Lorraine Peitel, Berg Hill, Ohio, USA. Welcome, Lorraine. Luciano. Greetings, everyone. This is Luciano from Brazil. Welcome, Luciano. Lynn. Welcome, Lynn. Maria. This is Maria. Hello, everyone. And Bart. New York State, USA. Welcome, Maria and Bart. Maria Cristina. Maria Cristina Donadieu. Greetings from the Tucson, Arizona desert in USA. Welcome, Maria Cristina. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Borgen, Minneapolis. Welcome, Nathaniel. Nick. Welcome, Nick. Rebecca. Rebecca in Australia. Welcome, Rebecca. Rosie. Hello, everyone. I'm Rosie Romero from Tijuana, Mexico. Welcome, Rosie. Solil. This is um, Andy and Soleil, and we are in uh, Bay Area, USA. Welcome, Andy and Soleil. Tanya. Please unmute yourself, Tanya. Hello, everybody. This is Tanya Belfort from Salvador, Brazil. Welcome, Tanya. Tina. Hello, this is Tina Hutchings from Colorado, USA. Welcome, Tina. And Veronica. Hello, this is Anne Veronica from Athens, Greece. Welcome, Anne Veronica. Welcome, everyone. And over to you, Tara. Tara, if you'll, if you'll begin again, thank you. <clears throat> Be glad to. Welcome to everyone 
and all who are joining us subjectively at this time. As a united group, we recognize and affirm ourselves wherever we are as world servers. <clears throat> we are one in this period of world anguish. In unity of isolation, in unity of sharing, in unity of healing love. <clears throat> With a deep breath, we align ourselves with the greater good. With another deep breath, we recognize and align as one, heart to heart, across distance. With another deep breath, as a group, we align ourselves with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. As an aligned group, our focus today is goal number four, quality education. Over to you, George. I want to thank Tara uh, for, for, for the beautiful uh, spirit that you brought to, uh, you bring into this group. You brought up so many beautiful um, objectives or points of where our spirit moves us. And you talked about the isolation, you talked about the sharing, you talked about healing. And in the end, you mentioned that the last word you mentioned was love. Um, as an educator of 35 years and uh, with a, a deep purpose in bringing peace building uh, to the students' repertoire, I guess you want to call it a toolbox, my classroom is, one of the classrooms I'm working with now is we call ourselves the global leaders or the emerging global leaders, meaning I want to create a cadre of young minds um, and provide with them the tools to build a better world. Um, and the tools oftentimes, it's not just what they learn in, in the textbooks, but what they feel in their hearts. And I want them to own their future. Uh, so in a sense, uh, Gandhi always says, be the change you wish to see in the world. I want them to be that change, not only to see in the world, but to create in the world. And what I found is um, to create that change, you have to create great joy in creating that change. And that's what my classroom tries to look like, a place of great joy, um, where my students feel like equal partners with me. Uh, and that's extremely important. It's not I'm leading the conversation, but I'm part of the conversation. And not only that, but I value their energy. Um, that is the key part, that not only they valued, but truly needed. Um, and being that we're connected with the United Nations, I'm connected with Pathways to Peace, and living in New Jersey, Middletown, New Jersey, we have a ferry that takes us 40 minutes across the, the bay to the United Nations. And that's where I connect my students to the ongoing narrative of what's shaping the world. And their voices then are enjoined in that narrative 
I want them to be unafraid. I want them to be courageous in speaking and speaking out and also in creating that ongoing world of what they can do and who they are. So the United Nations for us uh, and the SDGs number four creates that bridge being that they are in education. The big word, the, quality, the, the, the question I, I often focus on is the quality of the education. Uh, oftentimes we went to the, the United States and part of the world has seen no child left behind sort of become integrated in the classrooms, which is a big focus on testing. Uh, but the testing component sort of creates uh, or buries almost that creative aspect of who they are and what they can do and what they can be. So what I do is when I bring them to the UN, we often go to conferences that they can sort of be a part of, and a lot of it's on education, climate change, um, gender equality. And we often come back the next day and talk about, okay, now what role can we play? And there was a conference, actually a committee meeting I took them to on the International Day of Peace, where the focus was on the refugees, the plight of the refugees, of the families and the children who are, been, who are sort of being de denied their future. Because as refugees, they're sort of put in a, a place that they don't have a say. And education almost becomes... <clears throat> uh, not that important, it becomes more important to survive each day. But I know working around the world, the number one priority for almost all students and all parents is, is other than safety and health is education. So I said to my students that day, there was a blank board. I got a little background noise coming on, just wanted to just be aware of that. There's a blackboard, complete uh, blank board. Take your passion to that board and create a way we can reach out to the refugees in Syria, in Greece, in Turkey, where they, where they are denied education. How can you reach across and give it to them, create that? How can you create that? And what my students were able to do, uh, and I, that's what the video was sort of, I sent the video out to, to the group. It just gives you an idea of their energy and, and their value. Um, I said, Fill that board up with your with your skills, with your talents. Uh, fill that empty board with your solutions, with your actions, but, but create it. Uh, and I backed away. And what they were able to do is divide it into three sections. And what came out of that was the, the educational toolkit, the global education toolkit, which was an online learning board with students that they created, they coded it out, they uh, reached out to schools and school districts, asking to donate lessons, specifically in math, English is a second language, technology, science, and they posted to the board and said to anyone, anyone who has digital access, here is lessons, here are lessons for parents, for teachers, and for students that you can continue, you can learn on your own, you can learn from your phone, from your computer, whatever you have, uh, here they are. And um, in the next phase is the students want to actually go on and start tutoring students from around the world uh, so they can sort of play a role in helping them continue their education. But the, the key is with this educational toolkit is that they, they created it, so that means they own it. And this has been a four year program that they have been working on and continue to work on and will continue to work on throughout their lives um, in many forms. So the key, what, what I've considered to be a key to quality education is how do you create that sense of ownership of what students can own, create, control, and sort of embellish throughout their lives as they go through their lives with these tools that they were given in my class or in, in our school and carry it forward into their lives. And oftentimes they tell me years later, I've been doing this for 35 years, uh, Ms. Anthony, you, 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 your skill sets follow me in everything I do. Uh, skill sets in conflict resolution, negotiation, mediation, peace building. Um, they follow me. And uh, that is the purpose, I think, of education, to give them the, the ability to create that change that we want them to be in the world. Just a format, I'll put it into, into the chat. I'm not sure if it goes out, but it's www.prepforpeace.org. And this is all student run 
and student developed. Thank you. Thank you, George. That, <clears throat> George, what you have provided through this Global Educational Toolkit is a workable approach that is outreach, not just within someone thinking, but outreach to truly serve. And that is all part of global education. And from this, and as you have developed it and your students together are developing it, I think you're a learner as well as a teacher. That and is I, the truth. Thank you, Tara. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I don't mind an interruption. You want to interrupt a little bit more? No, but I think that's our greatest blessing is that we learn from each other. Uh, and, and that is something <laughs> that educators can tell you. Uh, life is an ongoing journey, and uh, each day provides us an opportunity to learn and to bring that learning into our lives and to the lives of others. Yes, but thank you for that. You're most welcome because we're all part of it. And with this whole concept of this goal of quality education worldwide, the United Nations then is truly a beacon of a new reality. The etymology of the word, word education is educare, to lead, to draw forth that which is within. The world pandemic, of course, causes us worldwide disruption and even chaos on all levels of human health, well-being, and endeavor. And the normal ways which we have been experiencing of being and doing in all cultures and all nations no longer are going to work very well, if at all. This malevolent destruction and distribution and disruption of the past is a very painful, vast process. Everyone everywhere is drawing forth that which is within just to survive. A personal and group survival will eventually foster a sustainable new consciousness. This time of crisis is a time of opportunity. <clears throat> the old forms, though comfortable and familiar, have served their purpose. And now all of us as humanity are forced to move to build anew. There's no return to the past. We're entering the new age of Aquarius. This is the time of the new moon in Taurus. The keynote of the higher self in Taurus is when the eye is opened, all is revealed. With an open eye, we may well consider the possibilities that the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals could be revealed and recognized as a blueprint for a coming world renaissance. We are the learners, the teachers, the creative innovators of a new reality, a new day, bringing forth that which lies within. Today, <clears throat> we're exploring this new renaissance as perceived through goal number four, quality education. I've asked myself, what are some of the values, the guiding principles that must manifest in quality education worldwide? One, the basic foundation of education, of learning, of living throughout life is the golden rule. The golden rule is present in 
all cultures, religions, and nations, and is basic in developing right human relations. Two, quality education inculcates cooperation in learning, sharing, living. A school or a gathering place is truly a community of teaching, of learning, the value of the individual, the recognition of the group, and the fact of one humanity. Three, quality education must come from and with the heart, involving respect and caring for all life and for the living planet Earth. <clears throat> Four, quality education is preparing for the Renaissance in all arts and sciences and the free flow of the creative spirit. Five, <clears throat> quality education is much more than imparting knowledge, certainly learning the basics of communication via reading, writing, arithmetic, the arts and sciences is essential. However, quality education must involve international world education. Six, quality education is a lifelong opportunity. <clears throat> As one of my inspired teachers admonished me, Tara, have a full faith in life. I'd like to share with you one story about a young boy named Neil and his mother, around 28 or so when I met her, just outside of London, England. <clears throat> Neil's mother was most concerned about the challenges in the life of her young son. One day she had an inspiration. Neil was home doing geography homework and she interrupted him and talked with him about the explorers of the past and how they had traveled into the unknown to discover lands unknown to them. And together she told me that she and Neil wondered about how these explorers must have felt when they returned home and tried to share with their family and friends and even governments all they had discovered and experienced. Often they were greeted with ridicule and laughter as they described their expanded knowledge and wonder of their discoveries. And then she said something to Neil that really deeply impressed me. She said, you may explore this earth or reach out toward outer space. However, there's a part of you that could be called inner space, a field of consciousness, which at times may even involve projections of awareness. You may now, in your years to come, explore this inner space, this inner reality. And she admonished him that Neil was and is an explorer who well may not be understood by others when he talks about his journeys. Each person has to become his or her own explorer to truly know. And then his mother told me that Neil looked at her and said, oh, I wish you could have told me that when I was five. I do understand. I always knew I was different, but I thought I was different in a bad sort of way. The self-image is one of the most potent elements of the human psyche. Education must be a co-learning environment involving a school as a community with an integrated 
approach to all life. Where there is no vision, the people perish. I suggest that the 17 sustainable goals of the United Nations be viewed as a plan toward the new Renaissance. At this time of the new moon in Taurus, we recognize that when the eye is opened, all is revealed. And Doug, you have the next piece of conversation. Thank you, George, and thank you, Tara. Um, as a springboard, I'd like to reinforce uh, several concepts. Um, initially, George talked about uh, standardized testing as being um, actually a model from the carryover of the business community with mission statements and objectives that's led to aligning curriculum to uh, uh, our teaching and George's model of actually integrating subjects in a service-oriented way um, allows uh, the definition that Tara described of to educe, to draw forth the latent potentialities, and also as the uh, anecdote with the uh, boy and his mother in England suggest that to find purposeful education, um, we, we do not any of us go through our day circling A, B, C, D, or E as a response to a multiple choice standardized test. So, um, and, and uh, along the line of Tara's communication with the mother, uh, looking forward into the new age, one of the features of education is the value of parenting. Uh, in the past, uh, if you look at the Old Testament and you've heard of Methuselah, uh, purportedly lived for nearly a thousand years. Well, that was patriarchal lineage. And through his sons, they were largely following the mold that he had set. Obviously, um, that excludes 50% of his daughters. And if you look at Scandinavian countries, uh, names like Erickson, Johnson, um, Davidson, the old format is to make our children a replica of ourselves that no longer holds good. The purpose of parenting should be not for family legacy or to extend the parents' own aspirations, but rather to facilitate their continued expression of their own soul. And that confused boy that Tara spoke of, he, uh, between Tara and the mother, they're affirming there is nothing wrong with you, uh, that you don't match up with the formal system. It's that in expressing the best that is in you, um, you are just right. And so there's a trite expression, give your child two things. First, their roots, which are the security, the nurturance, the love, 
And the second thing, give your child two things. First, the roots, and then their wing. And that, if it is, becomes the value, the purpose of parenting is to nurture soul development and not an extension of ourselves. And as many of us are aunts, uncles, grandparents, um, that is also our purpose to bring out the best of the soul qualities and allow children to be a congruent with who and what essential qualities they already possess. So thank you. Um, one of the, I believe the slide's been up for quite a while. Um, the fundamental um, idea of, as was alluded to before, education does have a purpose in equipping a child to navigate the physical world. Yet in learning academic skills, oftentimes the soul quality becomes occluded by uh, A, B, C, one, two, three, and concrete learning. Um, what G George's model is, um, as you saw, there was literacy, uh, collaboration, planning, but at the heart was service and using education to express the best that was in the children. And my model relates to Rudolf Steiner, um, his anthroposophy, which is the wisdom of the human. Yes, I probably mispronounced that. Um, but at any rate, it is over 100 years since the model was advanced and it continues today in Waldorf schools and it places a value on the imaginative and visualization ability of the child. And in fact, that is the thesis of our group is to so condition the mental plane uh, that it becomes manifest. As we all sit in our room wearing clothing, if you look around the room, everything you're wearing, everything you see began in the mind of someone in a draft board that gathered the raw materials and made those objects manifest. We do that as a group uh, through our own visualization and imagery. Um, and it, in terms of uh, the current humanitarian crisis, how much a replication of every story told through humanity, if you've watched Disney movies, the the main character, the protagonist, um, and children love to imitate the fairy princess, the noble prince. And in nearly the story that never gets um, tired of being told is the person of good values facing overwhelming odds and seemingly insurmountable obstacles and yet gathering strengths, i.e. spiritual qualities and emerging triumphant. And that as much as it's the pandemic, we see the mutual dependency that when we 
protect ourselves from the virus. It is interrelated to the welfare of others because we don't spread it. Um, it this is a unique feature of the planetary shared experience against a for formidable foe to which we all become a part of the heroism of attempting to um, surmount that obstacle and hopefully learn lessons in our interdependency and carry them forward. So sorry if I drifted from formal education. Um, we a, as I mentioned, that traditional parenting was very patriarchal, and the family name uh, often contained the father's name only. That brings to the point of female education. If you look at the conflict of the Middle East and Africa, what is conspicuously absent? There is a denial of female access to education that needs to become a global value. And there's very practical reasons besides the benefit to the educated person in countries where there is female education, there is a much lower birth rate in a planet that is contaminating itself with pollution. A lower birth rate will allow us to have a chance to rebalance nature and consume resources and solve problems of resources. Um, education raises the standard of living. And we know from Maslow's hierarchy that if someone is uneducated, has a large number of children, that the higher values cannot be advanced if we are hungry and unsheltered or displaced by war. And thank you for George, um, as he talked about um, the hearts and minds of his students turning to the plight of refugees. Um, the other advantage of educated women having fewer children is those few, fewer children through adult developed intellect also achieve more. Um, one of the, um, if you look at the educational system of war-torn countries with refugees, once again, you see a patriarchal society. If you look at their educational format, it is um, fundamentalist religion, doctrine, and dogma subjected to uh, memorization. It is not drawing out children's inner qualities. It is externally imposed and propaganda oriented. And the current trend of turning away from dogmatic religion and towards spirituality. And as Tara said, the fundamental underlying principle of all religions relates back to the golden rule and how we relate to others. So I would encourage, um, whether it's in your mental consciousness or your bank account, to provide relief for refugees. And I would just offer an example from the Carter Center. 
um, active in Africa. They trained a local native woman uh, to have a credential of a health educator. And the Carter Center advisor accompanied her around villages to thatched huts where she advised them on sanitation and prevention of disease, notably uh, river blindness and uh, guinea worm. And when that educated indigenous person went into those huts, the accompanying observer watched, particularly the daughters, were absolutely transfixed because here was an educated woman showing compassion and telling them how to keep their family safe and avoid the debil debilitating effects of disease. And as you can imagine, going from hut to hut, that allowed for girls to capture an, a vision for their future. And we need to support that, whether it's Carter Center, FINCA, Heifer International, Oxfam, UNHCR. Um, those are all providing relief and uh, female education sorely needed. Thank you so much, Doug. And um, I think in terms of building those thought forms for us all, you are going to lead us into meditation now. Is that right? Uh, yes. Oh, the visualization meditation with, I'll ask you to join in is from the Waldorf format. And like George, I've been a teacher since 1973. And let me reassure you, no student has ever been wrong in their participation with a visualization. So uh, we can do this. And as we uh, unite in thought and vision, we still retain our own visualization, imagery, picture making ability. And so we begin. As we prepare to enter the garden of education, we take a deep breath for alignment and orientation to our so qualities of goodness, truth, and beauty. We take another breath and visualize a lighted web connecting this group in support of universal education. With our third breath, we breathe out light and love to the whole human family. As a group, we lift our consciousness and look out on Mother Earth in all of her beauty. And in each of our higher thoughts, contemplate the sustainable development goal of quality education to include all members of the human family throughout their lifespan. Pause and reflect. Consider your impressions and vision of quality education.
Now together, we enter a symbolic garden, which we call the Garden of Education. And with each sentence, create your own vision. You stand on the path at the entrance of the garden. As you enter the garden path, you first come to the seed bed. The seeds are new incoming souls, which contain the potential for growth when nurtured by the warmth of love. The seeds need two things, the soil of adequate nutrients to sprout with vigor and the light in order to rise from the darkness. Visualize all teachers and caretakers planting seeds and pouring forth the waters of life such that all children have the food, shelter, and security for their growth. The germinating seeds now emerge from the soil seeking the light of knowledge. As you proceed further on the garden path, the germinated seeds have become sprouts and seek to grow to their maximum potential. Visualize a planet where each gardener adds their quota of light for plants to reach their full potential. See schools around the planet as inviting and engaging places where learning supports living a purposeful life. Walk further into the garden and find a sitting bench next to a clear, calm pool of reflective water. As you gaze into the pool, the reflection is not that of the physical form, but rather the mirror of the soul. The image of the soul is the picture of a fulfilling life destiny in this round of experience. Realize that a fulfilling life is finding one's field of service. See that the soul's intention is to lead upward on an ascending spiral of spiritual expression. As the soul rises, it becomes like the sun. The soul light radiates over a broader expanse and gives warmth to all it contacts. You invoke your soul and ask that the light and love of the world teacher be expressed ever more clearly through you. See the light waxing in greater brightness around the entire planet as the value of education is advanced by humanity, seeking the greater good for all members of the human family, as well as the lower kingdoms and bringing about a flourishing of life. Recognize that parents, caregivers, and teachers are gardeners of the soul. Envision the entire planet, nurturing life more abundant through education, where all are both teachers and learners. See the value of knowledge qualified by love 
leading to wisdom, such that all may flower forth. Inhale the fragrant blossoms of inspiration that attract the pollination and continue the cycle of building the seeds for the next garden. Let us plant the seeds of goodness, truth, and beauty. Pause and consider again how you envision the thriving garden of education. As the mantra is sounded, invoke the energies of light, goodwill, and cooperation, fulfilling the goal of inclusive quality education to support lifelong learning. And could we have the mantra screen? And um, I will narrate the mantra um, the, and ask the group to join in thought. Let the forces of light bring illumination to all humankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May all those of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all of us be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. And thank you for joining in the visualization of the Garden of Education. And we now come to the point for group discussion and invite participants to focus on the Sustainable Development Goal number four and consider the criteria for quality education as listed under the goal statement and we open the floor. So it looks like Jeff might want to share and I think Tanya wanted to share, and just before we do that, wondering if the uh, George, Tara, Doug, thank you so much. If you wanted to share uh, a further thought based on what you heard from one another as well. Yeah, I'd like to just add one other thought, and that's um, I think Tara spoke powerfully about the isolation with COVID nineteen has done to the world has forced us into our homes and uh, prevent that sort of human interaction. Um, but what if I was, I'm working with my students now on that and I'm, I'm making, I'm, I'm asking them to sort of create videos uh, that address that, that address. One, thank you, thank you for all the volunteers, healthcare responders, uh, uh, healthcare workers. Um, but another thing I want them to, I'm asking for healthcare workers, people in the front lines to sort of send us their words so we can read them to the world. Um, and so what I truly believe is an educator is something that here is an empty space, fill it with your hope, uh, and then it's not empty anymore. So that's something I always believe in, even like today, this just this past hour, prior to this, this, this from two o'clock to three o'clock might have been an empty space, I might have been doing anything, a number of other things, but here I am connected to so many beautiful uh, souls throughout the world. 
uh, filling it, uh, filling my world, and not only my world, but the world itself with hope uh, that didn't exist prior to this moment. Um, maybe in another context, but not in this context. So that's so important uh, to create and fill that emptiness with hope. I just wanted to sort of give that to the group. One of the key things to me is that as we're looking at global world education, it's different in many places, many countries. And I think that one of the key things that we must all do is to listen to each other. The goal, yes, we have quality education. But what that may mean in Uzbekistan or Nepal or Manchuria or anywhere, if you want to look at it, may be slightly different or major indifference. So a key is to listen. Mm, such an important point, Tara, and um, as we're digesting this material a little bit further, I know that um, Tanya Belfort um, had some material that she wanted to bring into the space too. So, um, Tanya, would you like to unmute yourself? And um... Yes, um, good afternoon to everybody. I would initially like to thank uh, the contributions from George Anthony, uh, from Tara as well. And uh, actually, this last words that she spoke, it was like there was some telepathy going on because um, as she said, you know, we must listen what every country has to say. Um, we're not here criticizing, we are appreciating or, or trying to understand the problem worldwide in order to reach someday um, unity. Uh, well, in Brazil, the situation that I think is, was very dangerous in the last six to 70 years was to abolish religions or any spiritual education from the curriculum. And uh, then when you look back, we're looking back just to evaluate and contemplate. Uh, we received the lessons last century as transmitted by Alice Bailey. But um, I've decided that I would bring back those thoughts so that we could um, think it all, think them over and realize what was done, what was not done, because these texts were written between wars and uh, now we are facing an invisible um, enemy, you know, this coronavirus, which is affecting all of us. So Alice Bailey um, initially she wrote last century, it's difficult for modern men to conceive of a time when there will be no racial, national, or separative religious consciousness present in human thinking. The time when humanity will be able to think in universal terms still lies far ahead, but the fact that we can speak of it, desire it, and plan for it is surely the guarantee that it's not impossible. Then she continues saying, many decades must elapse before such a state of affairs will be actively present. But it will be decades and not centuries if humanity can learn the lessons of war and if the reactionary and conservative people in every nation can be prevented from swinging civilization back on to the bad old lines. So here we are, 67 years later, you know, are reviewing those wide um, words and advices from Ellis Bailey in the book, uh, Education in the New Age. She said uh, with a lot of uh, humility, I can perhaps indicate the nature of this process, education. What do we know about the nature? She said, uh, First of all, there is a thread of energy, which we call the life or spirit aspect, anchored in the heart. 
it uses the bloodstream, as is well known, as its distributing agency. And through the medium of the blood, life energy carries regenerating power and coordinating energy to all the physical organisms and keeps the body whole. Secondly, she says, there is a thread of energy, which we call the consciousness aspect or the faculty of soul knowledge anchored in the center of the head. It controls that response mechanism, which we call the brain. And through it, its medium, it directs activity and induces awareness throughout the body by means of the nervous system. Educators, therefore, have three things to bear in mind during this present of transition, present period of transition, I'm sorry. Number one, she says, we have to reorient the knowledge, the consciousness aspect or the sense of awareness in the child in such a manner that he realizes from infancy that all that he has been taught or is being taught is with the view to the good of others more than of himself. Number two, to teach him that the life which he feels pulsing through his veins is only one small part of the total life pulsing throughout all forms, all kingdoms in nature, all planets in the solar system. He will learn that he shares it with all that exists and that therefore a true blood brotherhood is everywhere to be found. And thirdly, she says, the unification in consciousness of the life impulse and the urge to knowledge will lead eventually to a planned activity. This planned activity will constitute service. So I think this is a good moment for us to review what went wrong in the past 60 or 70 years. I want to thank um, Douglas Wells for mentioning Steiner's work, which is one great, great marvelous work, which um, exists until today, and other great uh, educators as well. But something went wrong, maybe because education aimed at children and not at adults or old people. We should all be studying constantly and mainly towards spirituality and towards this better home. Then Bailey continues, she mentions about the Aquarian age, which will be coming. And Philip Lindsay has already warned us that uh, we are seeing or witnessing that um, uh, it's, uh, we were already starting to feel the impulses, mainly now in the Storos uh, Aquarian full moon. Uh, she says about the Aquarian age, it's needless for me to outline for you the nature of the educational systems of the Aquarian age, because they would prove most unsuitable at this time. This was last century, of course. But she said, three major sciences will eventually dominate the field of education in the new age. They will not negate the activities of modern science, but will integrate them into wider subjective whole. So as I read the, those three sciences, let's think if we are focusing them in our plans and innovations. First of all, she says we should start or we are going to start the science of Antakarana building bridges. And this is actually what the 2025 initiative does. It builds bridges efficiently not only in education, but in all fields of the sustainable goals. Bailey says, this is a new and true science of the mind, which will ut utilize mental substance for the building of the bridge between personality and soul, and then between the soul and the spiritual triad. Secondly, the science of meditation. And of course, we just had this beautiful meditation conducted by Douglas and um, by the, the, the entire group of, uh, through their thoughts, enlightened thoughts. Bailey says, at present, 
meditation is associated in the minds of men associated with religious matters. But that relates only to theme. The science can be applied to every possible life process. In reality, this science is a subsidiary branch preparatory to the science of the Antakarana. It's really the true science of a cult bridge building or bridging in consciousness. And I think we have done some progress on that since last century, and we should develop efforts so that meditation would be included in the activities of children and grown-ups and uh, college students everywhere. This ability to get in touch with the soul, the internal soul, and um, yeah, be in touch with this internal garden as it was mentioned. And thirdly, she says, the science of service, which grows normally and naturally out of the successful application of the other two sciences. So what we must do, according to Bailey, identification with group purposes and plans is the natural attribute of the soul, as is identification is carried forward on mental and soul levels, it produces a corresponding activity in the personal life. And this activity we call service. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tanya. And and um, this so much um, emphasis today on the, the idea of the um, the, the service of the group and um, the expansion of the consciousness beyond the self. And it seems like um, George's um, work is really talking to that very strongly. And I wondered, George, if you would say a little bit about um, social emotional learning and how you see that placed in education now in relation to that. Um, yeah. I think the idea of um, social emotional learning, it has to be, okay, let me see if I can put this in and in, in give this some clarity. Students have to feel valued, um, but they also have to know that they have a responsibility to one another. So I think sometimes the most successful classes are classes where um, people can speak their minds, but at the same time know that um, they're not going to be judged so much for what they're saying or what they believe in, and that we will support where people are as long as they are not hurting the feelings of others. Uh, but the most, I think the other important thing is that um, each child can make a difference in the life of another. It's, it's sort of, um, Stevie Wonder said this once at a UN conference, he said that all of us have something inside of us that we can give to another person, uh, and it's free, and of course that's your time, your kindness, your smile, um, and you can create that safe place for people immediately. Uh, at the same time, you can also create an unsafe space for someone by giving them, uh, by not treating them in a dignified manner or less than dignified manner. So I think a classroom, a successful classroom has to be where each child understands the role of dignity in that classroom and the respect they have for other people. And when they feel someone is is hurtful, it's being hurt by another individual, or someone is being quiet, or we sort of we talk about that disconnect. If another child is feeling disconnected, uh, sometimes we give it a word that invisible child. It's important that each child in that classroom knows that they can play a role in reconnecting that child back to our community, because we don't want to lose that person's love, that person's passion. Um, I, I kind of sometimes talk about my own daughter when she was in elementary school. She loved playing the xylophone. That's the, the uh, you know, with, and she could handle two sticks in each hand and go across that thing like a. Uh, she, she just created beautiful music, and I and I know in sixth grade, uh, a student made a comment like, "Why would you play that? It's so uncool." Um, and literally, I, it's the saddest thing is she she um, she dropped the stick. She didn't play music anymore. I mean, fortunately, I think that would like this. She did pick up a softball bat. She she became an all divisional type of softball player. But I often think of that other half of her, that musical part that died that day uh, because someone said something, and no one was there to sort of pick her back up and say, "No, um, 
you, you, your music is beautiful, your spirit is beautiful, continue to play. Um, so that part of that, that light was, was t shut down. So it's really important that we teach our students that they truly can play a role uh, in providing a, a light uh, into the life of another person and they can uh, be responsible for that. They can be the difference in the life of another uh, and, and play that role and not just leave it up to teachers and, and also to the community, but each other. And, and that's key um, in that regard. And the other half also is that people can disagree. Uh, people will have different opinions. I think Tara brought up powerfully when she talked about the art of listening. And uh, we cover that quite a bit in our classes, the art of listening, which is a lost science. Um, and the art of being there for a person, present and listening, and not just hearing what they're saying, but understanding what they're saying. And we often say that you don't always have to agree with what the person is saying, but it's just important that you understand why they are saying it. But at the same time, be prepared to sort of express how you feel um, and also be prepared that they may not understand or may not agree with you, but it's important that you create a place, a safe place where both people can be heard. Um, and that's a safe space. So uh, social emotional learning does play a role in that, but students play a very powerful role in creating that safe space uh, where they feel uh, valued. Mm. So I hope I was able to sort of address that in, in a okay. short moment. Uh, it's a beautiful um, explanation of um, how all of these ideals that we're speaking about today become practical mm -hmm. in terms of um, just extending awareness um, for the for the educator um, to to bring that for the student and the students then to extend their awareness and it and it all then becomes a, such a meaningful exchange and an important process of growth and learning to understand each other as human beings. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, is there anyone from the participants who would like to say anything? Did um, Doug still have his hand up or is there anyone who would like to speak? Um, I would like I, to add. Oh. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'd like to add a little bit of what uh, George was talking about just now in regard to a totally other different part of the world. And that would be in the part of Nepal. And what occurred there was a group of Westerners, mostly educators, deciding that after the earthquake that took many villages, that they would go and take along the help that they would like to provide and give. And they went to a village and the village had truly had been quite devastated in that earthquake. And <clears throat> they knew that they needed a school. And so they, they came with all of the equipment needed to build a school. Uh, <clears throat> and the people gathered and they all came together and they said, uh, the Western educators said, and we came to build you a school and we have friends who are donating books in your languages and you will have a school. And some of the people said, well, that would be fine, but you have to build us a temple first, a place where we can go together to teach and to learn how and the ways of being grateful to what is happening for us. And so one of the Westerners said, but that could happen in school. They said, yes, <clears throat> but we need the silence of that space to commune with that which is greater. And then the school. And that's exactly what happened. And they all listened and they all, both Westerners and Nepalese and indigenous people in that area, worked together to build a temple. 
and to build a school. Listen, and in the silence, we will know that we are one in a whole wonder-filled world. Thank you. Thank you, Doug and George and Tara. And thank you, everyone, uh, for joining. I'm looking at the time, Alexander. Yes. Thanks, everyone. And I might add just one thing to the sharing. I think the most valuable advice that I got through my um, school education was when my history teacher told us as we were preparing to one of the exams when we had to memorize a lot of dates and facts. She said, if you can learn like only one thing through your school years, that would be the most important thing that you need to learn is learn to learn. You don't need to remember any facts, but you need to learn how to learn. <laughs> and that became that most valuable advice I got from my instructors. Thanks to all who are here today and we all been and we all are in a position of learners and sometimes teachers and that's a great gift we all have to learn thank you and i as Always at the end of our webinars, I want to invite you for the coming webinars. And uh, this month is a special month. It's as we meditate and link under the energies of Taurus, and it's the highest point of the spiritual year. And as we prepare to the Vesak festival in Taurus full moon. We want to invite you to a collective journey, journey of planting a garden. And as in that beautiful visualization that Douglas led us through, we invite us together to meditate on the global garden and the, the garden of light and love and share its space for all the people to come together as one family. And we suggest to start that global garden with planting own little garden or own little tree or a shrub, or just a plant in a pot. So we invite you to choose a plant. And in the next two, uh, two weeks before the full moon, to have your own intimate ritual with the plant, finding the best time in your climate zone, in your uh, area, and to plant that living bean 
linking deeply with it and with the Mother Earth and meditate on what mantra you and your plant can offer to the global garden. And as you plant, please share this vision with your plant of the wider garden that this plant will become part of. And then when we will come together during the full moon, the Vesak ritual, we will together have a joint ritual dedicating our global garden, seeing the earth becoming sacred, manifesting its inner sacredness. And that would be on May 5th that we invite you to join our uh, group ritual for the dedication of the Global Garden. And on May 7th, we will invite you to join the exact time silent meditation, exact time of the full moon, followed by the ritual of distributing the blessed waters, sharing it with our plants, animals, and devas. and wins the entire universe. Plant in a garden. And in our next new moon cycle, as we will prepare to the next new moon in Gemini, we invite you to bring your focus to the goal nine of United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And that's on infrastructure in the innovation and industrialization what are those three things mean in the new world what are those three things mean in the in the after covid 19 world so let's bring our thoughts together staying as one group world service group thank you And that as we close now, that new moon will be, SDG webinar will be May 23rd. As we all prepare the way for a future that will look considerably different from that which we have known in the past, let us close with just a moment of silence. Silence as action. As we anchor the thought forms and distribute the energies gathered in this webinar focused on SDG 4, quality education. Thank you, everyone. Om Shanti.